On the screen, we have the diagram of an air conditioning system that operates with water chillers. Water chillers internally have a cooling system, which we can define as a refrigerator, responsible for cooling a flow of water that constantly enters and exits the equipment. This water is then sent to a building to cool a flow of air, which will be distributed to the premises of the building for conditioning purposes. Internally, the water chiller has the same basic components as a refrigerator. Condenser, in this case, cooled by an external water flow from the environment, unrelated to the chilled water circuit. Compressor, to improve performance and achieve high cooling capacity, a centrifugal compressor is used. Evaporator, in this part of the system, water enters and delivers heat to the refrigerant inside the refrigeration circuit. Expansion valve, to control the amount and pressure of the refrigerant that cools the chilled water. We have a chilled water distribution system coupled to three water chillers, which we will study next. 1. The water enters the chiller at 12 degrees Celsius and exits colder at 7 degrees Celsius for a delta T or temperature difference of 5 degrees Celsius. 2. Installation data indicates that each chiller has a power of 1000 kilowatts and a flow rate of 172 cubic meters per hour. 3. Each water chiller has its own pump, pump 1, pump 2, and pump 3. 4. These pumps operate at a constant flow rate, meaning the revolutions per minute RPM, of their motors remain constant. Thus, the amount of water each pump sends when activated is consistent. 5. This part is called the primary circuit. 6. This is the secondary part, which handles water distribution to the application. We have a pumping station, with a variable flow rate. 7. This means the motors vary their speeds or RPM, which in turn changes the flow rate. 8. The three pumps come together, and send a single flow rate, while in the primary circuit, each pump sends water to its respective chiller. 9. The chilled water reaches the building, and passes to the air handling units, or fan coils, where a fan is responsible for passing air through each coil, or heat exchanger to cool the air. 10. In this example, at this moment all units are operating at 100%. The three water chillers, and the three pumps are running at maximum capacity, sending a total of 516 cubic meters of chilled water to the installation. 11. This flow is sent by the three pumps, which are operating at 100% capacity, and then returns after passing through all the building's applications to return to the primary circuit. 12. The part from point A to point B is a connection that, in this case, has zero flow, as all the water leaving the chillers is directed to the building, and there is no excess chilled water. 13. Therefore, there is no water flow through this bypass at the moment. However, if the amount of water handled by the chillers is different from that handled by the building's application, there will be excess chilled water flow, which will pass through this bypass, to mix with the less chilled water returning from the building. Thus avoiding wasting the work of the water chiller. 14. For example, when a location in the building does not require chilled water, perhaps because it is unoccupied, the pumps in the secondary circuit reduce their revolutions to only send the necessary water flow to the building. 15. In this scenario, since the three water chillers are still running and always handle the same flow, there is excess chilled water that can still be used. Therefore, it is directed through this bypass to contribute to cooling the water returning from the building. 